Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Creator Toolbox. This is a show that we put on for you all in the community so that we can bring these new features from our most recent release, Zurich, uh, straight to your screens. Joining me today are two product managers to talk to you about more ATF features, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Thank you all. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Olin Kogini. I'm the outbound PM for Upgrade Execution Tools, which includes ATF, Upgrades, Instant Scan, and Light. Happy to be here. Hello, today. everybody. My name is Ravi Matrala. I'm the inbound product manager on the testing tools, including ATF. So I'll kick it off to Olinka. All right. Thank you, El. Hi, everyone. Today, we're, we're going to tell you about Failure Insight, the second feature in ATF that we're bringing to you for Zurich. Um, and the whole goal from, from onset, we've always tried to ensure that two teams are actually fixed for you. The first one is altering a test in ATF, and the second one is maintaining a test in ATF. So Failure Insight is the one that actually falls under maintaining a test in ATF. So we're going to tell you about it, and Ravi will do a demo of how to use it, which is interesting. All right, so we'll be talking about some safe album notice, some some road things on our roadmap. So this is a safe album notice not to make any decision based on anything we talk about uh, or any future um, looking product we talked about. So failure inside, basically. Um, now with failure inside, the whole idea is to help you understand the changes in your test. Now there are times when you run the test and initially the, the test is the test is successful, and upon some changes in the metadata of some changes from your team members, you realize that running the test again um, it, uh, resulted to a, a failed test. Now failure insight is that tool that actually gives you insight into what's happening behind the scene in metadata changes. It helps you show side by side file comparison, and it helps you also once you've been able to see what the changes are, you can then assign the fixing of the resolution to a team member. Um, we'll be sharing the results link also, but you can find more information about Failure Insight for ATF on our dog page. I'll be passing it over to Ravi to do a demo of this wonderful feature. Thank you, Yinka. All right, let's jump into the uh, how we use this particular product. So I am going to uh, use a couple of tests that I have written uh, that, that already exist, and I'll explain to you, you know, what's going on and what the issue was and how this particular tool would work in this particular case, right? So this particular test is a simple basic UI test. Um, I, I changed this uh, test slightly, but I'll, let me walk you through that. So what it does is it's impersonating a particular user and it opens up a form, simple, and then uh, fills in uh, the field values necessary. And then it submits that particular form, nothing fancy, right? The thing I changed here, and this is why this test will fail, is the impersonate user it used to be the ATF user, okay? It used to be the ATF user with particular ropes. Now I changed that to able tutor to force this particular failure. To go back to what Yinka said earlier, that's typically what happens. You have a test that is running, uh, your regression test suite in your regression test suite, I mean, everything works well, and then some environmental change happens or the role of a person that was, uh, uh, that was impersonated to run that particular test changes or somebody leaves. Things like that happen in real world, right? And then the test fails. Now the developer is trying to figure out why this test failed or the QE uh, team member is trying to figure out. And that's a, a, a big pain. What we are trying to do is to simplify that a whole lot. So in this particular case, case coming back here, it, the field values are actually set to the ATF user, right? Because it is we are impersonating to the wrong user, they don't have access to that particular form. And that is why this test is going to fail. So let me... Uh, let me let me run this test. I've run this test in the past already, as you can see, but I'm going to run this test real quick just to show you. All right, it finished running that test. As expected, there was a failure. Now, like imagine, and, and it, the, let me talk through this real quick. The interesting thing is that, hey, what it tells me is it failed on the third step, which was where it was trying to set the, uh, set field values, right? 
This can be confusing if you think about it, right? Because what really changed was the user that was trying to access that particular form. Now, here's where the magic comes in. This link that you see here, find changes since the last successful run. Uh, this is essentially initiating the, uh, the insights tool that we created for you. What it does is instead of you going down that wild goose chase of, okay, why did the third step fail? It actually tells you what exactly changed, right? In this case, it's the impersonation that changed. And better yet, if I right click on it and I hit compare, it gives you a lot more detail. It tells you, hey, the, in the earlier version, what was it when, it when it was a successful run? What was it in that particular case? It used to be an ATF user, right? No surprises there, but it changed to able tutor. It could have been uh, a similar thing uh, elsewhere, right? If you had a, excuse me, a script include uh, perhaps, and it, it, uh, there was something that changed inside of that, we would be able to figure out why uh, that change happened and you will see that over here and it's in the interface that most service now admins and developers are used to so that's perfect yes absolutely so that was what uh, happened in this particular test case let me show you another example uh, for you go back to my oh, there it is okay I want to show you the basic record producer test. Uh, again, this is a fairly simple test. Here, there's no impersonation, but let's tackle another sort of a failure, which is a field value failure. Uh, let me just walk you through what this test is doing. It's opening up a, a record, a record producer, then it's setting some field variable values, validate the variable values. Right here, it's saying, hey, look, this is what I'm looking for. It's a to medium urgency, right? But if I go further down after opening that record, the field value validation is urgency set to three, which is a problem. I changed that. I made that change uh, to force the failure in this particular case, right? This is a totally probable thing. Imagine somebody went into the uh, form by mistake and updated the uh, urgency value to a different number compared to what it was supposed to be earlier. And this test will then catch it and tell you that there was a problem. I will go back to the test failures. Like I said, just to save some time, I, uh, I ran this test earlier. There was a successful run. And let's just go into the failed uh, run in this particular case. I don't want to bore you with that. What it's telling you is, hey, something changed on the fee value validation uh, step compared to the last time instead of you having to go through and figure out why that happened, right? Now let's go do the comparison again. See, it tells you specifically what the change was. It used to be a two medium and now it's a three low. Now as a developer or a QE, I can simply go back to my test and make that change real quick or go back to the form. And if this is the right thing to do, then make the update to the actual form that, and then make the update to the test as well, of course. Right? But otherwise you would have spent the time trying to figure this out on your own. Yeah, Ravi, can we talk about what happens when you have a, a bunch of this and you want to assign to someone to resolve? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Thank you. That was the next step I have. One other thing I wanted to show you, well, you know, let's just do this first. So as a, say, let's say you are an admin and you notice a bunch of these test failures uh, happen. Now you are wanting to uh, get somebody on the dev team or somebody on the QE team to take a look at this because you may not fully understand, okay, this change, but I don't know, I'm not going to go make this change. How would you handle something like that? So it's, as you can see, there is a create task button that we've introduced over here. All you got to do then is uh, from a, for a scenario of uh, as an admin, you are trying to assign this particular issue to somebody to go take a look at, fix the test, fix the code, whatever that is. All you got to do is uh, you click the issue that uh, the application files, 
that you want to assign to somebody. You create a task. And by default, we will create a incident task uh, that gets assigned, or rather, you'll have to fill out. OK, so let's say I am able to tutor, and I'm making this particular setup. And I want to assign it to Christian Mitchell, who is my dev. And the nice part is we pre-populate it with, hey, look, this is the instance that this problem happened on, right? And a bunch of good information in terms of the feed value validation is lost. So you can simply go back and take a look at that. And when I submit that, that gets that that um, incident gets created for you in your dev instance at that point in time. Pretty cool. And Ravi, you said by default, when you say create a task, it creates an incident. But uh, for those that might have CSM or a different table that they want to put that on, is that uh, something they can yeah. do? Yes, that was, I was going to show that next. Let me take you where that configuration exists. So ATF, and I go into the administration uh, properties. And this is where that setup is. So you could have changed that from incident to problem. You know, let me change that. Let's go back to the tests here. Let's go back here. And then if I create a task, it creates a problem task for you instead. The, right. uh, the configurations are limited to um, task, problem, and incident. All right. There was one more thing I wanted to show you real quick. So I want to go to test results in ATF. There's an other way to, uh, to run this particular tool from the results page. So if I want to specifically compare a couple of these, I could do that. Compare traced metadata. There you go. You still got the same result as you did earlier, but you can essentially have the same capability of running the capability on uh, from the test results page instead. Yeah, in the future, we actually have something cool coming out. We are uh, working on an agent which essentially tells you not just, hey, these things changed from a metadata perspective, but we will look at all of your server logs and your client logs and the metadata and this, and other, other stuff like snapshot changes and, and those things as well and we'll come back and give you an RCA, right? Instead of, you know, we'll go one step further. Even here, you're like, oh, this uh, this metadata changed. I still have to go figure out, okay, I'm gonna go make this change here to make this test pass. Right? But with the agent that is uh, upcoming in the, in the near future, we will give you a specific RCA saying, this is why the test failed. And we'll give you a list of steps that you simply will have to go follow to make the changes on your test or uh, on the code itself to get the test to a passing state. Much more advanced compared to just telling you, hey, here's a metadata that changed. All right. Well, that is the this episode of ATF with failure insights for the Zurich release. Check out our channel for other Creator Toolbox episodes as they come out. It's This was a, a very busy month for approaching November because we're getting closer to a store release. So you'll be seeing more episodes come out soon. All right. Thank you to both of you for joining me for both of these episodes of ATF. If you haven't seen the other episode, go check that out on our channel too. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.